My uh, first guest tonight, he's actually made his own TV series, uh, much like this, but with money. And <laughs> I must get a tip. And also, uh, one of uh, a silver Logie. Put your hands together and welcome Rob Carlton, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I like that talk show moment when you come on and you whisper in my ear absolutely nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I had something prepared, but I forgot it. Um, I was learning to whisper. Yeah. And it was, um, it was just saying it was just going to connect us emotionally. Yeah. Uh, and then I just looked into those eyes of yours and thought, nah, untrustworthy. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> you're, you're a method actor or are you a... No, no, no you I'm not. Just go and get it done? Just so. go and get the job done. You turn up on time, yeah. you hit your mark, you remember your line, and if you can add a little bit of little bit of a tear on every line yeah then you go for it yeah yeah, yeah. they can edit around the tears later I, uh, I introduced you as the the Logie winner you, you, you played Kerry Packer I did did you uh, have you ever met him I did what was I he did. like um, look I, I um, in in the moment he was fine um, I, it was a very short moment I was possibly the poorest Australian at the time living on the dole trying to write a play yeah, just a young artist yeah. you know hoping for a better life um, and I found myself strangely, and Look I went to you now. Here, I know, here I am, yeah. still hoping <laughs> for a better life. Um, and, and, and so I, I found myself strangely, and I won't tell you how or why I got there. But in the in the in the Tuesday cheap um, cheap seats at the Bondi Cinema, watching a, a film with Kerry Packer and yeah. two other people. Um, and so that was yeah. And then walking out to, to the car park later, I had a little bit of a chat with him. He was. Uh, you know, he was—he uh, wasn't effusive. Did you? Uh, do, what, what research did you do to uh, to play him? Did you read his book or, or the the book that he, he never had? wrote a book? That I, okay. Um, yeah, did no, I read the, the, book, the books about him? Book. <laughs> he could have written a book. Um, no? Yeah, but no, never published. No, but that's, yeah, no. I did a huge amount of research for that role. I was terrified for a start. Yeah. Um, and doesn't terror get you going? Bring out Where, the best. Yeah, yeah, be? yeah. So I was yeah. desperately frightened of um, whether I could do it. Yeah. Whether I had the skill set. I knew everyone would have an opinion uh, on it because everyone's got an opinion on the big fella. Yeah. Um, and so you put those two things together and it, it's, it, it's terrifying. So obviously to get out of my terror, um, I did as much work as I humanly could. So I, I read, I, I've been interested in this stuff for a while. So I read a lot anyway and I've re read a lot of books. Then I was very lucky to catch up with uh, three or four people um, th that were basically his second in charges or his conciliary for 25, 30 years of his life. Mm. So guys that spent a huge amount of time with him, with, with him and they gave me some fascinating stories. Do you um, gamble? I don't. <laughs> Not with my money. No. What you got? <laughs> Have a look around. What do you reckon? <laughs> you put it all on red, didn't you? <laughs> she came up black. Yeah. Hey, um, did you put on weight? Did you put on weight for the uh, for the? Mate, I did. I didn't have much time um, mm. to do that, so I tried to pack on an extra few kilos because I, I wore a fat suit, and what I didn't want because the experts would have seen it, a man in a fat suit with a little pin head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what I did was put a little bit of, uh, put five extra kilos on. How, how do you, how do you gain it, weight on your face? Well, this is the key. It's an yeah. ancient mind trick. Yeah. Uh, you eat as many burgers and, and, and milkshakes as possible, and then when you, you, you dream at night, you dream of all things throaty. Yeah, all right, yeah. <laughs> so you hope that it will. I don't know if it does. Um, <laughs> but the other thing that helps, if you do put on an extra bit of weight, and we were, it was in the 70s. The, oh, the, the, well, the, so we yeah. had a 70s uh, collar and a 70s thing. So what we did was, to, instead of going from fat suit to pinhead, yeah. we go fat suit, transition towards my cut head. Yeah. yeah right, and then you lift your neck up oh, out yeah, the type yeah. thing, yeah. and then you can. Ah, oh, look at that. that. And then that's, you sit. That's sensational. <laughs> Uh, who's, uh, who were some of your inspirations out there that, uh, in the world of acting? Do you, oh, do you look no, to... mate. I'd start with Dick Smith. Yeah? Yeah, for sure. Like, when I was young, yeah. mate, the electronic He's been around forever, dick, hasn't he? Yeah. He has, actually, yeah. and that's a strangeness. Um, but the electronic dick was, when I was little, he just got himself... I know, so often it makes the ladies laugh. I oh, know. Um, <laughs> Flash, yeah. Flashbacks, flashbacks. I know, yeah. I know, because yeah. it's, it's not often you think of that and Dick Smith all in the one sentence, yeah. but there you are. Um, when I was young, he was this amazing guy, obviously, and he, he'd set up his uh, electronic retail store, 
But then he'd done really well, and he was also doing his amazing um, helicopter stuff. Oh, yeah. So he was just one of those guys, I thought, he, he can do anything. And he's a nerd. Yeah. Right? Did, you, did you ever buy one of those? You remember the, you could make your own radios. They, you get the board and all the oh. little things. And No, I didn't. I may have stolen no. one off a mate, though, who did the hard work. Yeah, no. <laughs> did you? No. <laughs> I was just saying, I couldn't be bothered. I'm not very electronically minded, but I had mates who were right into that. They'd want to build their own radios. And I'm like, you can just go to the shops and... Buy one off the electronic deck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's already prepared. Here's one I prepared earlier. Yeah. yeah. And he did it brilliantly. And yeah. now he's, you know, dovetailed that out of that handsomely into um, your peanut butters. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a natural transition. It is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So often you look yeah. to... You, 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 and the market never saw it coming. No. And neither did the consumer, sadly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why <laughs> Australian? Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I, I haven't. I've never tasted his um, his, uh, his uh, yeasty products, his veggie mites. No, I never tasted okay. his, his dick merchandise. Um, <laughs> a trop fest when you, when you won trop fest. I did. I, that I wouldn't did have ma that wouldn't have cost three million to make that. Mate, that, that cost twenty five bucks. Yeah. Yeah, that you was your, your short twin, film. You had your twin boys. Yeah, you? I exploited my children. Yeah. So, so for those of you that don't know, it, uh, my short film I made, Carmichael and Shane, is about a single father of twins that chooses a favourite child. Yeah. Um, but they're, you, they're you would anyway, kids. even if they're not twins, you'd still, you still have your favourite. Well, there's a natural affinity yeah. towards yeah. one, obviously, but yeah. most people keep that stuff hidden deep, deep, dark down. Yeah. Uh, I didn't. I sang, I sang it to the treetops. Yeah. Um, and so as a result, look, I mean, happily my children still love me, and, and that film went great. Mm. Uh, so we, we won Trop Fest. We shot it. Look, we we shot it on the um, on the Saturday or the Sunday. Yeah. I think it was due on the Thursday. Oh yeah. And it cost three digital videotapes, which rounds out at about twenty four bucks. Yeah. I think you are the perfect candidate to play a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think? Do you think? Yeah. Right. Okay. Cut your hair. Get a little high. Yeah. 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 And don't go old school. So often the first uh, thing people will do when you turn up and play a baddie is give you a flannelette shirt and a pair of KT-26s. Yeah. Um, it's true. I've played baddies all my life. I've been, I had my testicles removed on a country practice. I, I got kicked out of East Street by the Reverend Bob. Yeah. I got kicked out of Summer Bay by Alf. He called me a flaming mongrel. Yeah. <laughs> That guy's a prick. <laughs> I, I got, I got, <clears throat> I got <clears throat> my heart removed. It's still. Yeah. Tears me up. I got my heart removed in All Saints. I, I, I got shot dead in Water Rats. I blew myself up in Blue Healers. I got shot in the heart in Raw. I, I killed a granny on Thank God. Yeah, honestly, I don't think there's a bad thing that has been no. done on TV that I haven't done. done. And the first thing they try and do to you, flannels and a yeah. pair of KT yeah. 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 And so the first, I, I say, I'll see you, Flanny, and your KT26s, and I'll give you some high sideies. And we'll go bad. Yeah. yeah. Man, it'd be nice if you had a reoccurring role. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. You've had all this work, but they're all really I short know. roles. Right? I you know. know. You might want to be. Yeah. dies in the end, too. Yeah. Man, do you want to be Alf? Alf's been doing that show for 20 years, hasn't he? He's like, yeah. That's his meal ticket. He doesn't well, you know, yeah. yeah. He's, he's, uh, he's, he's, got a, he's, got a, he's got to face that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've progressed and done many, many things and many, many strings to your bow and, and any other cliche I can think of. Oh, I'm a, I'm, and, and, I'm a, uh, and I'm an aviation vigilante. There you go. <laughs> Rob Carlton, thank you very much for coming on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, coming up after the break, we have Christian... What's his last name? M. There Christian you go, M. Christian M after the break. <laughs>